Hello everybody, I'm Nick. In this video, we're going to talk about the different layers that our application has and why what we're going with currently is wrong and how we can make it better, more maintainable, versioned, and so on and so forth. So I want to take a step back and I want to explain a few things. Our controller should only return a versioned type of object that's in this requests or response folder. Our services should only operate with domain objects. So the post is a domain object or the tag is a domain object. And then the data context, which is our data access layer, should only operate with DTOs. So ideally this should be like this. And then in the controller we have response objects like we have with this post response here or with this auth failed response here. The reason why we haven't implemented this until now is simplicity, but for now I want to show you how you can actually use different types of objects on different layers and map from one another without having too much trouble and complexity. The reason why we want to do that is because you want to be able to make changes in your in-memory objects, the domain objects, as business logic objects, without breaking your consumers. Because once you publish an endpoint, this endpoint for somebody is a contract and you shouldn't just make changes because you might break the application that's consuming it. So what you want to do is you want to make changes to your domain object and then potentially make minor changes or additions to your contract, so non-breaking changes. Likewise, instead of saving your domain object in the database, you should only be saving your DTOs and then you should be mapping DTOs to domain objects and then domain objects to response contracts. This is the flow that you should go with. In this video, I'm, going, I'm only going to show you the first half, which is the domain to the response contract. And that's because of simplicity, uh, but the same approach is actually used to map from domain to DTO and from DTO to domain. So without any further ado, let me just go straight into the implementation. So currently we do have a single post response object, but it only has a good. What we want to do is we're going to go in the DTO or domain object. In this case, it's the same, but you should be splitting this. And I'm going to take all these properties except the ID and I'm going to post them here. So the problem with this is we have this foreign key stuff that are none of the business of this contract. And we have this identity user, which again, it's none of the business of this contract. On top of that, we have a virtual keyword from um, NT Framework. We don't need this anymore. And here we can change that to iEnumerable. Again, this is a post tag object. And the post tag object, if we go to just import this so I can F12 on it, it has this tag, this foreign key, this post domain. We don't want that. What we want to do instead is create a new contract here. We're going to name tag response. And I'm actually going to create it in the responses folder. And the only thing that's going to go in here is a single string named name. And that's the tag name. And this is how our contract should, should look like. Notice how it's much simpler than the beefy domain slash DTO object that we currently have. It doesn't need to have all this info and it needs to be decoupled from the domain. This is why we are doing this to begin with. So now that we have this separated, it doesn't just work, of course. We have to go back to the post controller. Currently, this should only be used in the create endpoint. So we're going to have to go here and say comma and then say name equals post dot name and then comma tags equals to post dot tags and then dot select. And we're going to have to select the tag name and say in the select new tag response and then name equals x dot tag name and now we return the full object as a response so we can make changes to our internal objects but not this contract and now we don't have to break our consumers while we make those changes which is the whole point this approach should be used across every endpoint uh, that returns a post, so we should no longer return the domain object nowhere. So again here, post response, and I'm going to say post, in fact, sorry, id equals post dot id, and then name, I should just copy this here so I don't have to repeat myself over and over again, and just paste that here. And now we return post response. And again, we find the update one 
and we say yeah return that here and in this one where we return many we say posts equal to this and then var post responses equals post dot select post and then we just go in here and we copy this again and there's a reason why I'm taking you through this process even though it might look tedious is because I also want to show you how we can make this better so now every controller uh, in fact every post related controller returns a post response we also have to do the same for the tags controller because tags also returns a contract and we have to go through the whole process so find this new tag say new tag response and that's simpler it only has one property so we're gonna say new tag dot name and again let me just copy this and go here and say yeah tag dot name and we finally have to do the same thing with tags here so await post service get all tags I think and then say tag tag responses equals tags dot select and we have to select this so we convert it here and we just return it so let's enumerate through that as well and let's do the same here so this goes here uh, this doesn't need to be here okay cool so now we only return tag responses and post responses we no longer return any domain objects in any controller this is awesome we decoupled our contracts from our domain we're fine so let's go ahead and test that and see how that looks like so what I got here is I'm gonna just quickly register with my test account sorry that is login get our token and if you remember from previous video the response we're gonna get now is quite different than the response that we used to get with all those objects that we never really wanted to use so let's create a new post new post here and make a tag called new post and as you can see this is now created we also get the user ID which is not populated so we're gonna have to quickly fix this one in the post contract we have to also say user ID post dot user ID let me quickly just sort this out uh, in every conversion so this is there now If I restart this and I rerun this, sure enough, the user ID is now populated. Something I forgot to add is that we need to actually to list this. I shouldn't have removed it. So let, let me just go ahead and add it. Uh, that's only when we just select a, as an enumerable, but we never actually enumerate it. And if I run this again, you should be able to also see the two endpoints I didn't show you, which is the get all tags endpoint and the get all posts endpoint. So if I select this, all posts are here thin response object and if I do the same uh, with the tags and I just execute this all tags are here this is awesome however what's not really nice is all these lines that I have to copy over the place over and over again as you can see those names actually match almost every single time the ID is ID really and if I go to the uh, tag response just the name that I need so is there a way to actually make this uh, simpler and in fact there is um, we can use something called automapper now there are many opinions about automapper positive and negative uh, i'd like to go by um, what the creator jimmy bogart said which is if you can automatically map based on naming like 75 percent of your object then you should use automapper uh, if not then you should use some custom mapping logic 
Uh, in this case, we can actually map pretty much everything um, without any custom mapping. So for that reason, I'm going to use AutoMapper. What I'm going to do to introduce that is I'm going to go to NuKit and I'm going to say AutoMapper here. So I'm going to add two packages, the AutoMapper package. And I'm also going to add these extensions, Microsoft Dependency Injection Package. And uh, the reason why I do this is because it gives us a very nice DI extension. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the startup and I'm going to say right here, services.add auto mapper. And the auto mapper method accepts uh, something called an assembly marker. So I'm going to say type of startup, which essentially tells the mapper to find the assembly that this type is in and then automatically resolve any mapping profiles and register them in the eye without me having to do any work. And you know me, when I don't have to do any work, I'm happy. So let me just go ahead and create a new folder now. And the folder is called mapping. And the reason why this exists is because I already practiced it and it created the folder. So I'm going to name this now mapping profiles. And I'm going to create a mapping profile called domain to response profile. And this class needs to extend the profile class coming from AutoMapper. And all the work we need to do is in the constructor. There are two things we need to map. First, we need to create a map from the tag domain object to the tag response. And this automatically finds the naming matching in the properties and maps whatever it can. And we also need to create a map from post to post response. This should be enough. However, we have some custom mapping going on because the post object has this virtual post tag, which can't actually be automatically mapped to uh, the tag response. We have two approaches. We can either make a, a new map from post tag to tag response, or we can just manually overwrite this. And because I want to show you the customizability of AutoMapper, I will manually do it. We could very well do it uh, automatically, uh, but I want to show you how you can manually specify something. So dot for member is what you want because you want to specify the destination member that you are about to populate. So we want the tags object to be populated. And we say options and then option dot map from and where do we want to map from? Let me just put this in a new line. We want to map from the source member. And then the source member is tags, but we select and we select a new tag response where we say that the name equals x dot tag name. And this is how you customly map from one member to the other when the types and the naming doesn't quite make sense. This is quite simple. Now this DI method I added doesn't only just add this profile in DI, it will also add an interface. And this interface is the private read-only I mapper. And what does this magic interface do? Let me just inject it. What I can do now is you see this huge object here that we don't really like. Well, I can change this to this. I can say mapper and then map to a list of post responses. And that's it. And in fact, I can just delete this line and put this here. And this will automatically now, hence the name AutoMapper, map from the domain, which I specified, to the contract. And I can do the same across my whole application. So, again, it's not a list anymore, so it's just a single object. But this comes from the post object. And likewise, I'll place this everywhere. So here it goes again. And last but not least, here. So removing that. And we can do the same, of course, for the tags. 
so private read only i mapper mapper and then we eject that and we do the exact same thing so i'm just gonna say mapper dot map to a list of tag responses tags it looks pretty simple i think so we need to change it here as well I know this is probably quite boring to watch, so you can skip until I finish this copy pasting, but really you only have to configure this once and then you just use this simple auto mapper tool to do the rest, which is quite frankly, really, really nice. I really like this tool and I've heard many opinions about it, but I stand by it and I stand by what Jimmy said that, yeah, if you can map most of your object automatically, then you probably should use it. Okay, so now everything is using AutoMapper, we no longer do any manual mapping, so if I just run this again, and I move my swagger here, so this is the previous instance, but still uh, pointing to the new one now, so if I just do execute, you can see that everything is still mapped properly, it's like magic, I can still do all the retrievals, I can still create post, so new post with new tag, execute, no problem. I can still get a post by ID and the mapping there is also automatic. Again, this goes through AutoMapper. It's pretty awesome. Uh, and of course you can do the same from your uh, incoming contract, so the request to the domain object. And in fact, we're gonna see a video about Mediator in the future, so stay tuned for that because this is where this will be very useful. And of course you can also use it from your uh, domain to DTO if you want to add DTOs. I won't be adding them in this series. I'm going to share the domain and the DTO again for simplicity, but please understand that you should be using separate objects because migrations are just going to be a pain if you don't. This is all I had for this video. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.